Today I'm going to talk about really nice technique that you can use to create spontaneous abstract landscapes. I'm just going to start by wetting the paper about two thirds of the way down. I want to leave the bottom third dry just so the paint doesn't run into it. You can see by the shine on the paper there, that's, it's quite wet. I want the paint to move around freely. Just talk about what colours I've got there. Some indigo, raw umber, perylene green and potter's pink. I'm just going to grab some of the indigo, it's quite wet. Load the brush up and then just squeeze the tip, allowing the paint just to fall onto the paper. I've got the board flat for this, just so it doesn't run down too much. It's just going to run into the, the wet of, on the paper and just find its own level. You can see without having to do anything, it makes really some quite interesting little shapes. Now hopefully with the indigo being blue, it should recede into the distance. And I'll lay some darker colour over the top of it to bring that forward. So just grab some of the raw umber, mix a bit of indigo in with that. And just lay that in on top. You can be quite expressive with this technique really. You can just lay the paint down, allow it to move around and just see what shapes it creates. Just mop some of that up near the top there. I don't want it spreading out along the tape. Pick up some more of that raw umber. Just get some of that potter's pink. Very interesting pigment. It's not too strong, but it granulates beautifully. So if you're into granulating colours, suggest grab a tube of potter's pink. Experiment with it. It's, it's fantastic. It mixes very well as well without altering the pigment that you're putting it with.
I'm just randomly putting the paint down at this stage. Just trying to find a pleasing composition. Okay, just move some of it around with a brush. And I'm getting quite a heavy bead forming at the bottom there. I think I might use that in a little while just to create some texture in the land. There's another interesting pigment, perylene green. It's almost like a black, really. And it separates and when mixed with water, creates quite a, a very interesting dark green. switch to the calligraphy brush and like I said I'm just going to drag that bead around and kind of just kind of use it like a well of paint really just to create some dry brush textures maybe suggest a touch of shadow again just pull it around try and create a pleasing composition I think I'd just try and suggest what maybe could be a path leading up into those trees. It's all rather abstract anyway, so hopefully it'll leave a lot to the imagination of the viewer. up kind of a red brown that's with the potter's pink and the raw umber and just give that a bit of a spritz Already it's looking like a winter scene, some snow, some distant trees, maybe in a park somewhere. And just grab the board and just tilt it and allow that paint to run back. It's quite important to mop up the edges as you go really just so you don't get quite any cauliflowers forming unless that's what you're looking for I mean it can be quite effective and just tilt that quite steeply allow that paint just to move up I think I'm happy with that first wash, so I'll just grab the heat gun to dry that off, so it dries it off quickly. It's fully dry now, and you can see there's some interesting shapes have formed, so I don't really need to do too much to it, I don't think. So I'll just give it a quick spritz, and then grab some of the perylene green, some of the raw umber, 
bit of the indigo, basically everything on the palette there. And I'm just going to put in some dark outlines, just some winter tree shapes, basically. Very loosely with the calligraphy brush. And that should just create a hard edge, just to give everything a bit of context. Also acts to push the, the blue of the distant trees further back. Just put in a slightly larger, thicker one there. Just give it a spritz as I go, just to soften it off slightly. And then just create a connection through all of that underneath. the side. And just try and create a connection between all of them. Just very basically outline the suggestion of a path. Maybe it's going off into the distance there. Just a bit of dry brush texture in the foreground. Just a few very simple little grasses or twigs or something. Just grab this little tool, which is, I think it's like a clay modeling tool, and just scratch a few maybe grasses or highlights just onto those trees just to break up the, the black of the edge. And I think I'll call that finish. I think I'll just take the tape off and have a look at the finished painting. I think overall I'm quite happy with that. It's a very simple technique to create very loose semi-abstract paintings. I quite like the tree, the red tree that's in the middle there. I think maybe if I did it again, though, I'd possibly put it a bit further over to the right. I mean, I could have gone a bit further with this. I could have added more trees in the mid-ground, maybe some more grasses in the foreground, but it's nice and simple as it is. So I hope you enjoyed that anyway, and uh, please give the video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And please let me know what you think in the comments. I'll be back next week with another video, so I'll see you then. Bye for now.